Hi guys, Stunt Double here. This is my latest build. It's the Reptile Harrier S1100. The S1100 is a twin motor, 1.1 meter wingspan, flying wing, and it's made from molded EPP foam. The EPP is nice and smooth, all the parts fit together nicely, and it was quite an easy kit to put together. I've only had a few short flights with it so far, but it looks promising. I've got my S1100 set up as a twin, but you can run this as a single motor setup too. The motor's a T-Motor F60 Pro 2 2500 kV. At the moment, I'm running some Gemfan 6x4.5 inch props. ESC is a Flycolor X-Cross 35 amp, which are rated for a 50 amp burst. With this combo, I'm pulling 70 to 80 amps for around 1200 watts. The FPV camera is a Runcam Swift 2. The camera is stuck in the nose using hot glue with about 10 degrees down tilt. The HD camera is a GoPro Session 4. The GoPro is attached to a GWS 360 sail winch servo. I can also fly without the GoPro by swapping over to the second hatch that comes with the kit. Let's open it up and have a look. There's heaps of room inside the front compartment. I've been flying with two Graphene Ultra 1400 LiPos. You can easily fit bigger LiPos like a Multistar 4S4000 or a 5200. I'm getting about a 9 to 10 minute flight time, depending on how hard I push it. I'm running 5.8 vid and UHF for control. The 5.8 antenna is a furious pinwheel. The UHF antenna is just a homemade job. Let's open the rear hatch and have a look inside. I've got the VTX and the receiver mounted under the hatch. The VTX is a 500 milliwatt unit. The receiver is a 4 channel Easy UHF. The flight controller is an old RVOSD. The RVOSD is not quite as advanced as something like an Eagle Tree Vector, but they still work quite well and give you a safe RTH. The GPS is tucked away underneath this compartment here. Here is the RVOSD current sensor. There's a 12 volt reg to power the RVOSD, VTX and FPV camera. And a 5 volt reg underneath that to power the servos. And the servos are Hyperion DS11 AMB digitals. I had these left over from an old glider project. The push rods and control horns are just the ones that come with a kit and they seem to do the job okay. I've got a few 3D printed upgrades on this plane. The motor mounts that come with a kit are terrible so I made up these new ones. These mounts are removable and hold the motors on securely. You can find these parts on Thingiverse. The flight controller is sitting on an anti-vibration mount. Probably don't need this for most fly controllers, but the RVOSD is a bit prone to vibrations. This mount is on Thingiverse too. Another 3D printed part I've added is this bit for the plane hatch. This piece allows you to bolt down the hatch, which is important with the GoPro and the 360 servo mounted up top. In high rates, I'm flying with about 15mm of aileron travel and about 13mm of elevator. One thing to note is that the S1100 needs a lot of reflex. I'm flying with about 10mm up. 
The flying weight is about 1360 grams. I've got the CG at 290 mil back from the nose. This is just a little bit further back compared to the manual. And I'm using these little pins for CG markers. So what do I like about the S1100? The moulded EPP is very nice and this plane will be very durable. The twin motor setup is a bit different and it sounds awesome. The battery compartment is quite big so you can fit a variety of lipos. The rear compartment is big too so you have heaps of room for the electronics. The plane only cost me 92 Aussie dollars so it's pretty cheap. And I think it's quite a good looking plane too. The only thing I don't like about this plane is the stock motor mounts. But with my upgraded 3D printed mounts, that problem has been fixed. I think the S1100 is going to be a great plane for me. It's good to have a small wing again, which is a replacement for my old Funjet. And I think the EPP foam will last a long time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this vid. The Harrier S1100 is definitely worth a look. Cheers.